This is the Office 365 portal page where we enter the administrator credentials. As you can see here, we currently do not have any users apart of the default one. And concerning the domains, let's focus on this one, matching our Shibboleth configuration relying on Active Directory. As specified here, this domain is currently not configured for single sign-on. In order to do that, we have to download and install the Microsoft Online Services module, and then we have to open a remote console on Office 365, which we can do with these commands using the same credentials I used to connect to the web administration portal. These are the same commands that we saw on the slide. I put the same password, and it's working. Let's come back to the slide, because the next step is to inform Windows Azure Active Directory that we want this domain to be federated, passing our endpoints along with our token signing public key. And since we use the same SSL certificate to sign our tokens, we'll pass its public key. The real command, actually, is this one, set MSOL Microsoft Online Domain Authentication, passing the endpoints that I created here. Well, the connection succeeded, and we can check it by running the command get mailbox, for instance, which gives us the same user that we saw on the administrative console. So now it's time to federate Office 365 with our Shibboleth domain. Let's clear the console pane. As you can see, this is the same command that we have just seen on the slide. Please note that even if our web server runs on port 444, we don't have to specify it here in the issuer URI, while, of course, we have to use the right port number in the passive, active, and log off URI. So we now highlight the code and press F8 to run it. No errors is good news, and we got the domain federated in just a second. In fact, if I come back to the web console and I click on Refresh, as you can see it was managed and now it's single sign-on. This means that if we try to log on on the web portal with a UPN using mydomainedutimit.com, Well, as you can see, no password, and I'm currently being redirected uh, to my Shibboleth page. Of course, we have an error now because uh, the configuration still misses, which is what we are going to do right now. Well, now that our Office 365 domain is federated with Shibboleth, let's see how to provision new users. The first and much easier option is to install the Microsoft Directory synchronization tool on a Windows machine that is part of the Active Directory domain which our users belong to. This way, DealerSync takes care of creating and updating all the local AD users with the online users. In fact, each online user must match a local account, so-called shadow account. Now, in order to make sure that the local and online accounts identify the same user, they must share the same strong information. This piece of information, by default, is the Active Directory object GUID, matching the online immutable ID attribute. To be precise, the object GUID is actually first inverted in its first 8 bytes, and then its base 64 encoded. In other words, when Shibboleth passes the token back to Office 365, it actually passes the UPN together with the name identifier claim called the mutable ID, which contains the converted GUID. Here I have some PowerShell code snippets, but to make it easier, let's make a practical example. Let's take Sarah Connor. Here she is. And then we go to her attributes and we look for the object GUID. Here it is. We copy it, 
and then we paste it here in this tool which allows me to convert this grid in base64. We take it and this is our immutable ID that we can use with PowerShell. This is the function. As you can see, it's pretty easy. We have to specify the display name, the user principal name, and most important, the immutable ID that we have just built. We also set the usage location because it's necessary for setting the license later. If we select and then execute this function, we get the user created. This user still is not licensed. And we can choose either to give the license uh, through PowerShell as well, or to do it with the online administration console. Let's choose the second option. OK, this is the administrative console. As you can see right now, Sarah Connor is still not listed in our users. But if I refresh this page, here she is. As I said, she is still not licensed, so I can click on her and give a license. For instance, in this case, we can give her the Microsoft Office 365 plan for students, which does include Exchange Online plan one. We save. And now Sarah Connor is created and is given the license as well. Right now, she still cannot connect because uh, as we know, we still miss completing the Shibboleth configuration. However, this user is there. She has uh, the exchange license and her mailbox is currently being created and will be available in a few seconds.